Hey everybody, this is a quick update to my RX videos. I posted my RX video last week and I've been waiting to hear back from tech support to see if it's normal to see long render times and overloads when using more than a couple instances of Dialog Isolate or Repair Assistant. I finally heard back from them and I've had some productive conversations. First, once they finally responded, they've been very responsive. It did take about a week, not a, about, it did take a week to get the first meaningful response. I don't count the email telling me they've flagged my ticket to get an expedi expedited response as meaningful. And in case you haven't been following along, when I tested Dialog Isolate, the render times were unbelievably long and I had some issues running sessions that used multiple instances of Dialog Isolate or Repair Assistant. Tech support responded by saying, in this case, what you are describing is not the 100% expected behavior, but do note that certain RX renders can be quite CPU intensive. This is especially true for the newly updated Dialog Isolate and Music Rebalance machine learning algorithms. As a first step, I would consider using the RX standalone app. The app renders offline and it will greatly improve session efficiency when using RX with Logic. These symptoms are indicative of insufficient processing power for your current project settings. The following steps will likely improve the performance of your Isotope software within your DAW. We went through a list of pretty basic troubleshooting steps. Most of them I was already doing, except for freezing the tracks, because it's not 2003. I haven't had to freeze tracks in 15, 20 years, and I definitely shouldn't have to freeze tracks on a three-track session with only three plugins running. And let me pause things here for just a second. If you're interested in learning how to use RX to clean up podcasts, so you can stop relying on subscriptions or something like Adobe's Voice Destroyer, check out my RX course for podcasters and podcast editors. There's a link in the description below, but let's get back to the video. I re-emphasize to the tech that I want to use the plugins because they're more efficient for my workflow and using the RX editor, it just costs me too much time. Their response to that was, I see. While of course everyone has a slightly different workflow, I would consider at least trying the method here if you have not previously. The amount of time it takes to open an audio clip from your logic track in the RX editor is mere seconds. It really won't slow you down in any real way, and many users run the RX app alongside a DAW. Almost all professional Pro Tools dialog editors use a similar method. Of course, it may not be what you find to be the best either way. This kind of misses the part about inefficiency, as I still have to wait for RX to render each file. But I figured, hey, why not? I'll try out the editor to see how much faster it is than simply dealing with the slower render times in Hindenburg. I processed both tracks in the batch processor, and it took 29 minutes for track 1 and 30 minutes for track 2, so we'll call it 30 minutes to process, plus about 15 minutes to render the mixed and edited, ed and edited episode inside Hindenburg. That brings the total to 45 minutes, which is about 90 seconds faster than the original Hindenburg render. However, in most cases, I'll have to clean up each track individually and wait for each one to process. So how long does that take? I dialed in each track and rendered them individually. It took 16 minutes 57 seconds to process track 1, and it took 17 minutes 14 seconds to process track 2. This isn't any faster. It actually took a few minutes longer to render them individually at a total of 34 minutes and 11 seconds. I'm just not seeing a time savings by rendering and using the RX editor. I explained that I use Hindenburg for editing, and this was his response. 
Yeah, unfortunately, we don't QA or test with Hindenburg. If this DAW limits the core usage, that would be problematic for RX, as some of these tools are CPU heavy. Another reason yet to consider rendering offline in the RX app and then importing, exporting the files manually between RX and your DAW Hindenburg. They go on to explain how rendering within the editor isn't destructive because I can undo the changes in the history. But if I need to make a change, since I'm rendering and importing it into my DAW, I would have to go back to RX, undo the change, make the needed adjustments, re-render the file. I guess it's technically non-destructive, but it's not non-destructive like working in a DAW and plugins. This point seemed to get lost, but at this point, I've already given up. They wrapped things up nicely with, we are always looking for ways to improve our products, and this certainly includes CPU efficiency. The reality here is that the machine learning algorithms in RX, like Dialog Isolate, can utilize significant CPU power. It would be my recommendation to use these specific tools offline and in the RX Editor app when possible. So my question to Isotope is, why did you create plugins that use so much CPU power that a fairly modern and powerful computer like a Mac Studio can't run three instances at the same time? Why not just keep them locked into the standalone editor like you did in RX10, if that's the only way you recommend using them? Four years ago, it was inconceivable that we could use or apply re noise reduction and reverb reduction to a high level with plugins. But here we are, living in that reality. Isotope seems to understand the desire to do this work with plugins, but seems they're just kind of going through the motion so they can say, see, we have a plugin too. What do you think about this exchange? If you could do the same level of work with plugins in your DAW or within the RX editor, which method would you prefer? Is there something better about doing all the cleanup work in the editor? Is there a benefit to working directly in the DAW? Let me know in the comments below. And in case you missed it, you can catch my comparison of Dialog Isolate with competing plugins in this video here. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.